Hey guys, it's Jason here. Welcome to another episode of the Oak Mountain ACODs. Well, in this video, it's time for us to do our 50 hour service on the B2601 Kubota tractor. Now, uh, I've been putting this off and I haven't been able to get to the woods for the last weekend or two. It's been really cold out anyway, but uh, I didn't want to go over my 50 hours on the tractor. This is the break-in service that you're supposed to do when you buy these things new. And uh, as everybody knows, doing your maintenance on vehicles like this is the life of them and uh, I didn't want to miss it. So I'm not a mechanic. Uh, but I do try and do a lot of my own work myself as long as uh, I don't think I'm going to get myself in over my head. So for any of you mechanics out there, if you see anything that I'm doing wrong or things that I could do differently, leave me a note down in the comments and help me out. Stick around guys. Okay guys, so I'm going to walk you through what you're going to need to do this 50 hour service. So uh, I've got myself a 5 gallon pail of hydraulic fluid from Kubota. You don't need a pail this big, you can probably get away with just having like maybe a couple quarts to top up uh, if you spill some of your fluid. I've got a jug this big because I've got my Cranman hydraulic timber trailer behind the tractor. It's got over 20 hydraulic hoses on it and I'm bound to have a leak so I'm buying it in bulk. Um, you've got your engine oil filter, that's the smallest of the three filters, uh, and it says cartridge oil filter on the side, so it doesn't really tell you that it's for the engine oil, but it's the shortest one that you're going to get. I've got 15 weight 40 engine oil, uh, and you're going to need 3.1 liters of this engine oil when you do the, the oil and the filter change on the machine. And then we've got the next biggest filter, the next longest filter I should say. And this is going to be for the hydrostatic transmission. It says right on the side of it that it's filter HST, so you can't go wrong with that one. And then the last filter is going to be for the suction on the hydraulic uh, pump. And it's the longest of the three of them, and all it says on it is suction filter. So. The first thing, if you, if you haven't done this before, I recommend that you take all of these filters and walk around your machine and check them up against uh, each filter to make sure that they're the same length. Now all of the filters are the same diameter. Now I've got this uh, filter socket and I've checked it and it fits snugly on each one of these filters. So I know I've got the right uh, filter socket. And I wanted to talk about that for a minute because if you're like me and you've changed cartridge filters in the past, you've got one of these nylon filter changing tools and they work okay, but on some machines, you can't get this in to get the filter off. And when you can't get it in and you're in the middle of that job, if you're like me, you use the wrong tool for the job. And that's this uh, standard screwdriver. And that uh, involves beating it through the side of the cartridge and uh, twisting on it like a lever. Now, if you make a wrong move there, you can do some damage on the male stud that holds the filter in place and you could be in for a very big repair. So I don't recommend doing that method. Uh, now I was poking around on YouTube the other day and I saw these uh, filter sockets. I didn't even know such a thing existed, but when I saw it, I knew that I had to have it because it's the right tool for the job. So you can go online and you can find a whole case of these different sizes and uh, they come with a nice little wrench and they also come with a ratchet so that you can use that and there's a cheat sheet in the inside and uh, it basically tells you which one of those filter sockets works for each make of uh, a vehicle so i see everything on here from toyota nissan ford chev they're all here and uh, i just played around until i found the right one to fit the kubota stuff and marked it on my sheet for next time so I recommend you look this up. Uh, this is going to be the maiden voyage for uh, this set of uh, filter sockets, but I've got high hopes and we're going to see how we do. The other thing that you're going to need, guys, to do this job is a funnel. When you're filling up your fluids again, you should have some shop towel or some paper towel, maybe some cotton rags, and you got to have a set of gloves because you're going to get some oil on your hands. Um, and preferably something that you can throw away when you're, you're done with them because you will get them quite dirty. 
All right, let's uh, get underneath the tractor and see what things look like. Okay guys, so the engine oil filter is gonna be up front around the engine. We'll get to that soon. Right back underneath the seat of the tractor, but down in on the underside, there's a filter on this side and there's a filter on the other side. The filter on this side is the longest of all three filters and that's gonna be the suction filter for the hydraulic fluid. So we're gonna go after that one first. Uh, the suction filter and the HST filter is gonna leak oil. This is what they told me at the dealership. So I'm not gonna start my machine up and warm all the fluids up like you normally would for engine oil first. I'm going to actually drop those filters and change them, leave that oil cold and hopefully a little more viscous so I don't lose so much. That's my strategy anyway, we'll see how we do. Okay guys, this is more for me than you, but uh, I wanted to get a shot of the part number and the filter that says suction filter. This is the longest of the three, and it's gonna go on the right hand side underneath the operator seat uh, when we get down in there to change it. And that's when you're looking ahead. Okay guys, so if you've changed uh, these filters before, you know that uh, you're supposed to take a little bit of fresh oil and put around on the O-rings just to give yourself a good seal and maybe to help them come off a little better uh, down the road on the next service. So we just put a little bit of fresh oil on that one and uh, we'll do each one as we work along here. Okay guys, so here's a shot of that uh, long filter. You can see I'm the same length. I know that I'm the same size, so I've got the right filter for the job. And this is the suction filter for the uh, hydraulic fluid. So now I'm gonna start to change it here. Okay, so we've got the biggest oil pan that we could find, and this is supposed to be messy. So we're gonna get that right back in underneath the, the filter. We've got lots of uh, shop rag here ready to go. And we've got our spare filter. We've got the uh, rubber O-ring with fresh oil on it. And we're gonna put our nice little uh, filter socket on there. And we're gonna see if we can get this off. Wow, that worked good. Impressed so far. Okay, we got it loose, so that should be all we need to do with that uh, filter socket. Get that off there now. That might be the challenging part. Here we go. All right, now, let's see how we do. We're gonna spin this off, and we're gonna spin the other one right back on. Okay, so we lost we lost some fluid, but I don't know if it would have been a half a liter. It wasn't uh, wasn't significant. Now that oil was uh, very cold. I hadn't worn the machine up, but I guess it doesn't matter. That must be a synthetic uh, hydraulic oil. So we're just going to let the drip stop, wipe it down a little bit, and then we'll probably put the wrench on and just give that a quarter turn to make sure that we've got it on there tight. So it's on hand tight. We'll put our fancy socket wrench on and we'll just give it a quarter turn. Okay guys, this is the HST filter. It says HST filter right on the side of it. It's the second longest filter that you're gonna get for this service. And here's where it goes on the machine. So let's uh, Let's get that off. I've already loosened it with my wrench and now we're just gonna spin it off and spin the new one on. Okay, we got our big oil pan all set up. I got my other filter ready to go. Spin her off, put the new one right back on. We didn't lose a lot of oil on this side anyway, which is great. The other one, I guess, is uh, is the crucial one. You wanna take your time and make sure you don't cross thread these filters when you put them on. Get them on hand tight. This is what I've always done. And again, I'm not a mechanic, so I'm willing to take a lesson if there's any mechanics out there. I'm gonna put that on hand tight. 
Here we go. Wipe up my oil. We didn't lose a lot here. And then I always like, I always like to put uh, a piece of shot cloth underneath the filter for a while, just to watch for leaks. I'll check this out a little later on. And make sure that I don't have any leaks. Okay guys, I wanted to show you this. Uh, this is the little dipstick where you will check your hydraulic fluid. It's under the seat. And this is gonna be the filler cap here where we put some in. But we just changed the filter, so we're gonna start it up and circulate a little bit of uh, fluid to get uh, the filters charged again before we check it and top it up. And we're now gonna take a couple of minutes and warm the engine oil up so that it drains out of the machine really well. So we'll get the, we'll get the tractor started. Okay guys, so we raised the uh, bucket all the way up. I know that it's not uh, a good practice to work underneath these hydraulics and there's no uh, physical stops to do to work under this safely. Uh, but one thing that Kubota does have is there's a little locking feature here on the controller. You simply just pull it over and push it down and then you can't move this handle. So if somebody's walking by and they bump the handle, it's not going to drop those down. Now the other thing that I'm going to do from a safety perspective is I'm going to make sure that I never walk underneath that bucket and I'm not going to lay in across the machine. Um, the oil filter is going to be right here on the side where we can work at it and then I'm going to be crawling in underneath here anyway uh, to get at the uh, drain plugs. So we'll just make sure that we're aware of that and nobody will walk underneath the bucket and we'll be okay. Okay guys, we got the, uh, the protector moved ahead and we're just going to pop this and raise the wood up. should stay there. Okay, now the engine oil filter is on the left hand side of the machine. That guard pops off really easily. You just want to set that someplace so that you don't trip over it and break it. And uh, Karen, if you can come right around here, don't go into the bucket. There's your engine oil filter right there, guys. So we're going to double check and make sure that uh, our wrench will hook onto the side of that and uh, we're gonna go down in underneath and drain the oil. But the first thing that we're gonna do, and I'll just grab the camera. Okay, right down in here, guys, this is going to be where you put your engine oil back in and we're just gonna take that off. And I always like to set those someplace uh, where I won't forget. So I'm gonna get Karen to take the camera back now. We're gonna make a little spot right here for our parts. We certainly don't want to uh, forget to put that oil cover back on the tractor, so we'll leave it right there. Okay, we've gotta put a little bit of uh, fresh oil on the O-ring of this filter, like we did with the others. Should be good to go. And now we're gonna go down in underneath the tractor and uh, get the oil plugs out and drain that engine oil. Okay guys, I hope that you can uh, see these, but there's actually two oil drain plugs here, one here and one here to get both of the low points. And I guess for uh, compact reasons, they decided to um, Put a drive shaft right down through the center of that oil pan and that's why they split it up that way. But at least you can get all of the oil out, it just means that there's double plugs. So we're going to get our handy dandy oil pan back in place. And we should be able to, now remember these are 9 16 and they're on there pretty good. started. See if we can get the other one started. 
Okay, we got them started. So now, there's supposed to be a little copper washer on these. So you want to watch for that, make sure it doesn't fall on your pan. Okay, there's one. And I see the copper washer. I'll give you guys a close up of that in a second. Let's get the other one in here. Okay guys, there's the copper washer and one of the plugs. And I'm just gonna clean it up and get the second one. But you wanna make sure that you have those copper washers. See, that one stayed right on the bolt, so. They're all clean and ready to go back in when we're done draining oil. And we're almost there. Okay guys, so we're just gonna put those uh, drain plugs back up in where they came from. Make sure we got the copper washer on. Again, you always want to start these by hand so you don't cross thread. And then we'll just take our ratchet and snug them up. Okay, on to the filter. I'm gonna put some shop tile down around. There's all kinds of uh, cables and stuff here. This one's in a hard spot to keep things clean and neat and tidy like you'd like to. Um, anyway, we'll see how we do. We'll lay some shop tile down, do our best. And hopefully we'll hit the pan below. Now Karen's gonna come in and show you guys. Um, there's a there's a big ugly hose for the radiator right up against that filter, which is kind of odd. But that's the nice thing about this little uh, filter socket is that it fits just over the end of the filter, and it's not interfering with that hose. So there she goes. Now that did skip once on me. But that was a lot easier than trying to put one of those nylon wrenches on there. And we got it loosened off, so this is gonna be okay. Now we've got all the oil out of the machine. So with any luck, this is just gonna spin right off. I'm gonna get my socket off of there. Okay, we got our new filter. Now we got all the oil out of the machine, so we don't have to brush at this. There's gonna be some engine oil that leaks out of this. That's okay. The filter's gonna have oil in it. We'll clean up when we're done. And there it is. I'm gonna put it right down in the pan with the other ones. I've already got oil on my gasket. I'm gonna just put this in. Start it by hand. You almost have to force that filter in onto that hose to get it to start. I don't like that because it's hard to tell if everything's going smooth by hand, but it is. I'm not cross-threaded. It's just something to watch for. So I'm gonna take that in hand tight. About as much as I can do with my hand. And then I'm just gonna put my wrench back on and give it a quarter turn, just to make sure. And again, guys, if you're a mechanic and you can give me a tip or a trick here, this is the way I've always done my oil and filters on my equipment. Always willing to take a lesson. I think the next uh, service is at 150 hours, so that's 100 hours away from now. I'll try and remember to see if these filters come off easy then or if we've really got to work at them to get them off. And I'll probably do a little reading just to see how tight they should be. But that's the way I've always done it. I've always put them on hand tight and then tried to take them like a quarter to a half a turn again. So that's good there now. Okay, clean everything up. All we gotta do is 
top the oil up and we'll have this job done, guys. Okay, guys, so we're gonna put our 15 weight 40 back in for the engine oil. Um, you can see I've got a nice long filter here. Now these Kubota jugs, um, they've got the uh, they've got the markers on it, and I need 3.1 liters. So one, two, three point one liters. So when I get down to here, I'm gonna be done. So I'm just gonna start adding, and they've got a nice spout on the jug, so it's making it pretty easy. Okay, guys, so we're gonna check the, uh, the hydraulic oil level. We had circulated that oil through the filters. Now that's a yellow stick and you can't really see where the oil is on it, but if you touch it to a piece of paper towel, you can tell exactly where it is. So what we're going to do is stick that back down in there, pop it out and see what we got. So that says we're a little low. I'll check it again. Okay, so you can see where we're at and we wanna come all the way up to where my thumb is. So I think we're gonna to have to put a liter in there at least. This is where you add uh, that oil. It's just a rubber plug here. Now we've got, uh, that's iced up. So I wanna try and get that ice out of there without getting it down in the tank. Okay guys, we got a liter of this hydraulic oil in our oil jug here. And we're just using a funnel so that we don't spill. And I'll probably put half of this in and then we'll do a check. Okay guys, so we put that full liter in. And there we go, we're right at the mark. So that's exactly where we wanna be. Perfect. Don't forget to put your cover back in. Seat down. Now we just have to finish up with the engine oil. Okay guys, so there you have it. We uh, put 3.1 liters of engine oil back in the tractor. We've started it up to circulate things around and we've checked it with the dipstick on this side and everything's right where it's supposed to be. So uh, if you haven't changed oil and filter before, I wouldn't recommend that you make this 50 hour service your first project. Uh, you probably should go see the dealer and let them do it. It would be uh, well worth your while. But if you've changed your own oil on cars and trucks and things like that over the years, you can do this job. Save yourself a little bit of money. But like we always say guys, if you like our videos and you want to see more of them, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, share our videos with your friends and family and help us grow our channel. And come on back and check on us often because you never know what the Oak Mountain ACOTs are going to be up to next. We'll see you in the next one guys.